Okay. What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. But if that sounds similar to you, then Peter McKinnon, if you're watching this video, and I know for sure you're not, uh, and by chance if you watch this video, then I want you to know that this video was possible on my channel just because I got to learn a ton of things from your videos, from your content, uh, about filmmaking and editing pictures. It gave me a huge learning curve when I got into Lightroom and that's what I'm going to share in this video. So Pete, thank you so much. Now I get a lot of requests and DMs on my Instagram asking me one thing in particular and common that is how do I get to edit my pictures in a way that is so similar in tones and colors like how do I do that. So here's a little known secret. I use Adobe Lightroom which is a completely free version on the smartphone on iOS or Android but it is a paid version on the desktop wherein you get Adobe Photoshop, uh, Lightroom and a couple more things for a small package. It's paid, I do have a paid version on my desktop but then I use a free version to edit my pictures on the go when I'm traveling or when I click pictures on my phone. When I click pictures on my DSLR, I do use Lightroom on my desktop. So for this video, I'm going to talk about how do I edit a picture on Lightroom right on your smartphone. And in this video, I'm going to share about everything that I learned from Peter McKinnon, Pat, Matty Hapuja, <laughs> Patty Hapuja, Matty Hapuja, Chris Howe, and all those content creators who edit the pictures in a way that nobody can till date. So, how did I get from here to here is the video. First things first, hit the App Store or the Play Store on your smartphone, be it iOS or Android, download the app. So now I'm in the Lightroom in my iPhone and I just imported this picture that I want to edit. Now the first thing that I do while editing a picture, the first thing, the first step when I import a picture is crop. I don't actually crop the entire image to the place but then most of the times I just straighten the image. Straightening is very important as Peter McKinnon said. Because most of the times you feel the picture is straight but then when you upload on Instagram the borders make you feel that the image is not actually straight. So when I hit crop and I click straighten this will actually straighten the image and Lightroom will process the image and it will know if the image is straight or not. Now beyond the automatic straighten feature if you feel the image is not yet straight then you can straighten it manually by dragging this bar right here just the way I am doing it and you can get the image to be looking straight. This is perfect. So once the cropping part is done, now comes the main game of Lightroom. There are three important factors and things that you got to keep in mind when editing Lightroom. The first is lights and colors. You got to understand how lights and colors play in Lightroom. The second, getting the most details out of the picture. The third, keeping the subject in focus. Now these three things can be achieved in Lightroom pretty much easily in a snap and I'm going to show you how it is done. So now I go into lights. There are some sliders here, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. Now all these parameters in lights play a different role obviously so I'm going to show you how it affects a picture when you drag each slider left and right. So when I drag the exposure to the left it makes the image pretty much dark. Now as I told you get the most details out of your picture. That means when I look at this picture I know for sure there are some details that I can gather from the darker sections of the image. Now I want the dark areas to look much darker at the same time bring the details back. For that I'm going to reduce the exposure a little bit. Now if I increase the contrast too much I know for sure that I'm going to make this image look better but then I lose the details in the trees. So I'm going to increase it just a little bit I think 5 is okay. Now the highlights. The highlights are the places where your image has got bright spots of light in the image and they damage the image in a way wherein you lose details. So how do you play with highlights? If you reduce the highlights too much I'm going to lose some details in the sky. So I'm going to reduce the highlights a little bit not too much. The shadows and blacks play a very crucial role when it comes to editing a picture. Now if you increase shadows I'm going to get back the details from the dark areas of the leaves. Now what I want is I want the leaves to be visible in the dark but also look a little blacker and more contrasty in those areas. So how do I do that? I increase the shadows pretty much to get back all the details. This is fine. And I'm going to reduce the blacks to around 25 or 30. 30 is fine. Now this increasing the shadows and reducing the blacks will help me get the details back while maintaining the contrast that I want in the image. Now I don't play with whites much because that's not what I'd like to do but I use the white sometimes for the image if I feel that the image demands it. For this image I want to keep the whites as it is. Now comes colors. There are four basic things in colors. Temperature, tint, vibrant, saturation. Temperature is basically making the image look colder if you go to the left and warmer if you go to the right. So I'm going to keep the image a little warmer, little warmer and tint is basically when you add some greens or pink 
if you slide left or right respectively so i'm going to keep it a little pink little pink for this image i mostly go for the green slide but then for this image i'm going to go towards the right because the orange leaves on the roads and the trees will pop if i increase the pinks right here i'm going to keep the vibrance and saturation as it is now the usp of lightroom is the mix the mix panel gives you much much finer control over the colors of an image which many softwares do not give you so when i go to mix uh, I get an array of colors, red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, purple and magenta. So when you click an image, you have to know what sort of colors are present in the image. In this image, I think there are a lot of greens, orange, yellow, little bit of pink. Now each color is going to give you three different parameters, hue, saturation and luminance. Hue will change the tone of a particular color, saturation will add more intensity or reduce intensity of a particular color and luminance is the brightness of a particular color. For example, I can change the orange to make it look pink, reddish or I can make it look yellow. So for this image, I'm going to make it look a little reddish, little, ah, this is fine. Saturation, I'm going to pump it high because I like the oranges to pump out because it gives me a much more moody look for this image. The luminance, a little high because if I use the luminance too much, I lose the details on the leaves on the ground. So I'm going to reduce the luminance to a little, like around to seven. Same thing for yellow, I can make the yellow look a little orange or I can make the yellow look green. So I'm going to make it look a little, little orange. Saturation around uh, 50 and the luminance a little higher which will give me back the details. The greens, now the greens, mostly I reduce my greens or keep it subtle because I want the orange and yellows and reds to dominate in the picture. And for this image, I'm going to do the same thing. So saturation of the greens will go down drastically. Uh, the hue again can be brought to a little on the yellow side and the luminance won't play much of a role because it's already dark so i'm going to keep it a little darker this is fine now the reds let's see the reds in the image you can see the leaves are changing the colors there is some red on the leaves uh, which have fallen on the ground so i can make it look a little reddish saturation i'm going to increase it to around 40 42 is fine and luminance a little to 20. Now comes the cyan and the blue. If I increase saturation of the cyan, I see that there is not much cyan in the image. So I'm going to keep it as it is. Uh, so if I go to the blues, I can increase the blues and see. Oh, I got some blues on the road. Now if I increase saturation of the blue and reduce the hues to little cyan and the luminance a little higher, this looks much, much better than the original version. So if you want to check out the progress until now, all I have to do is press and hold. It will take you to the original version and if you leave, you're back to the editing version. Now colors are over for me. I'm going to go to the effects panel which is much much crucial in getting that moody, the gungy and the dramatic look that I wanted. Now the first thing, if I increase texture, uh, it's going to give me much more sharpness in the image, details in the image which I don't want. I want a little, little texture that's 3 is enough. Now clarity on the other hand, it's going to give me a much contrasty image. Now the difference between contrast and clarity which I learned basically is that when you increase the contrast, it's going to add more saturation by default. But when you increase clarity, it's similar, but it's going to reduce saturation by default. So here I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit. Uh, I mean, around, I'm going to keep it around 30. And I'm going to dehaze the image. Now when you dehaze the image to the left, uh, it's going to add more mist and more fog in the image. It's going to look a little more dramatic, but it's going to make your image look a little brighter. But if you go on the right, this will decrease the fog and the mist in your image. It's going to make it look even more richer and deeper. Uh, I'm going to add the dehaze around uh, 17 or 20. Now comes vignette. It's not vignette. It's not vignette. It's vignette. Now vignette basically helps you focus on the image. As I said, the third rule, keep your subject in focus. Now here, I want to keep my subject in focus. My subject is going to be the role that is going through the woods. So I want to keep that more focused. Now when someone looks at this image, I want the person to look at the road that cuts through the woods amongst the trees and then look at the trees around it. So basically, his mind is building a story around the image. Vignette will help you do that if you do it the right way. Now if I take Vignette to the left, it's going to add some darkness on the edges. If I go too much, it's going to add complete dark border on all the four corners. So I'm going to keep it subtle and I'm going to increase the feather. Now feather basically means how sharp or dull a vignette is. If I go to the left completely, it's going to make it look sharp, which I don't want obviously. I want to make it look a little subtle. The vignette should not be visible, but it should be felt. That's what I learned what vignetting is. And that's it, we got the image. So now we got all the details back from the dark portions of the trees and we made it look much more moody, much more grungy, much more dramatic, which I obviously always want. 
this is the original and this is what we got to. If you got something to take away from this video and learned something about Lightroom to start your editing game on Lightroom, then give a big fat thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.